welcome to our Christchurch Tunbridge Wells Youth Service and we hope that you're doing really well today and that you've had a good week. If it's your first time joining us then a special welcome to you. Uh, we're going to have a really great time together today where we're going to have uh, some challenges, we're going to have some worship from Sophie and Rolf again and some from Graham and then Rebecca is going to be sharing with us a really powerful and challenging word about how we can have hope for our future. Um, but before we get into that, let's look at last week's challenges and give you the answer first for our riddle. You may remember it was something to do with a uh, man not getting his hair wet but being caught in the rain. Here's the answer now. Thank you to everybody who tried to guess the riddle last week and the answer of why his hair didn't get wet because he didn't have any. He was bald. Well done. If you got that right this week, you'll feel really smug now. Um, if you didn't, then don't worry, there's another riddle coming up soon. The other challenge that we set you this week was to see your wow photos. Photos that would make us all go wow. And um, we've got some amazing entries to show you. Um, we've got Sebi's art, we've got a computer that Ben built, and um, some photography skills from Molly, and uh, Matthew's Rubik's Cube skills. So sit back, enjoy, and go wow at all of these amazing entries. We want to set you some new challenges again so you can get those points for the leaderboard and, and so Rebecca is here with our riddle first. This week's riddle is there is a boat full of people rammed with loads of people but yet there's not a single person on there. How can this be? So if you've worked that one out already well done get in touch um, and we can give your scores to the leaderboard if you've got that right. Now your other challenge, um, we want to set you a challenge this week where we want to see all the weird and wonderful things that you might have. Um, we've all got some strange things I'm sure, it might be a present that you were given once, it might be something strange you picked up when you were younger and now just looks really strange. Um, but, but we want to see a picture or, or send us some, uh, a video in of something weird and wonderful that you own. Again, I'm going to show you something that we've got. Um, this was a present from my brother. It's a, a, a garlic de-sheller, I guess, um, de-skin. Uh, and you put the garlic in the silicon tube, you press it, and apparently clean garlic's meant to come out. Um, yeah, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Thanks for that, brother. Um, so. Yeah, we want to see your pictures of weird and wonderful things. So send them in to jacob at cctw.org.uk and then we will show some of those next week if you get them to me by Wednesday. We're going to go into our time of worship uh, in a second. Uh, I'm just going to pray and then I'm going to hand over to Sophie and Rolf. So Lord, thank you that we can be here together today. Thank you that um, we have been able to put together another youth service and that we're still able to uh, connect with each other through challenges and through technology. And I just pray that today you'll really speak to us through our worship and that we will have a really powerful time together. Amen.
time of worship that you just led us in. I'm going to read uh, today from... Thank you Sophie and Rolf for that really powerful time of worship that you just led us in. I'm going to do our reading now and then Rebecca is going to bring us uh, a word about how we can have hope for the future. So today's reading is from Exodus chapter 13 verses 17 to 22. When Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them along the main road that runs through the Philistine territory, even though that was the shortest route to the promised land. God said, if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness toward the Red Sea. Thus the Israelites left Egypt like an army ready for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for Joseph had made the sons of Israel swear to do this. He said, God will certainly come to help you. When he does, you must take my bones with you from this place. The Israelites left Sukkoth and camped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. The Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud 
and then he provided light at night with a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel day or by night. And the Lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or the pillar of fire from its place in front of the people. What do you want to be when you grow up? This is a question that's asked throughout your childhood and even now. And I'm sure your answer may have changed throughout the years. And I would really love to know what some of you wanted to be when you were younger and if it's changed. But I'm gonna tell you a bit about my childhood dream. I really wanted to be a vet when I was younger. And it's largely because I grew up with quite a few pets. And Jacob may have told you, as he does tell a lot of people, that I lived on a farm. I would like to correct this right now. This is not the case. To Jacob coming from a household with no pets, walking into my house, yes, it would have felt like a farm, but it wasn't. So yes, there I was, I loved animals and I thought being able to spend every day with animals and helping them feel, feel better sounded like the dream. So in year 11, when it came to choosing my A-levels, I made sure I chose ones that would complement my application to university. So I chose two sciences and maths. And then in between year 11 and year 12, I thought, even better, it'd be so sensible to get some work experience before I dedicate my life to a career that I haven't actually done anything with. So I organised a week of work experience and in all honesty, I didn't even last half a day. By midday on the Monday, I had run out of that surgery knowing 100% the wrong career for me. And in fact, not long after that, I realised I wanted to be a lawyer. At that point, it would be very easy to panic, to think I've chosen sciences and maths and I want to be a lawyer. They definitely don't make sense when it comes to applying for that job and for that university degree. And so I could have easily felt like I was in a hopeless situation. And I'm sure you have been in a similar situation, maybe not when it came to choosing your A-levels. It could be things when it comes to friendships and friendships falling apart or breaking down and you not knowing what to do next. Or it could just be exams and you have revised really hard, you've put a lot of effort in and the results come back and they just don't reflect what you've put in and you don't know what more you can do to improve. All of these situations you could feel hopeless and lost and I want what we talk about today to be able to help you in those situations and how to, how to have hope no matter what you face. So we're going to start with verse 22, I believe. Yes, 22 of Exodus. And if you've got a Bible, please crack it open. If not, I'm going to read it, so it doesn't matter. So verse 22 says, The Lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or the pillar of fire in its place in front of the people. So this passage clearly says, that there was a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire provided by God, depending on what the time of day it was. And it says that it was constantly there. So from the moment the Israelites woke up, there, there was the pillar. From when they, then, when they went to sleep, the pillar was still there. This shows that it showed God's constant provision, a symbol of hope for them consistently throughout the day and throughout their time in the wilderness. And we're taught that God is never changing. He is everlasting and he is consistent. And if God was there for the Israelites back then, then he will be here for us today and in the future. And if God is with us, then we can always have hope. No matter what circumstances we face or whatever comes our way, if we're in our own personal wilderness, we're okay because we've got God. So we've got hope. And now the second thing I want to talk about talk about is back in verse 17 so it's a little bit earlier in the passage again I'm going to read it so it says when Pharaoh let the people go God did not lead them on the road to the Philistine country though that was the shorter route so I read this and I'm quite a logical thinker and I just thought this makes no sense so the Israelites are fleeing from somewhere and they and God didn't take them on the shorter route if you're fleeing you you definitely want the shorter route in my head and in most, in a society where we're all about efficiency and about speed, that's definitely what I read. And like you think about a sat-nav, and a sat-nav wouldn't be very popular if it took you on the longish route. I'd be very unhappy if I could see there was a 30 minute route, and in fact my sat-nav decided to take me on like a 42 minute route. I definitely would be taking that one back. 
So when I read this, I was definitely confused. And I think we can feel like that in life. When things aren't adding up or there's just a few more bumps in the road than what you anticipated and the journey is longer, you feel like that can't be God's plan. But actually right here in Exodus, it shows you that God's plan is not always the shortest route. And that that is hope for us, that when things aren't going to plan, it's okay. We often look and can only see what's right in front of us because that's all that's available. But we need to remember that God can see so much more. From the moment we were born, he had a plan. He knows your whole future. And we just need to trust that it all adds up in his plan. And his plan is amazing. So even though it's not adding up right now in our eyes, it adds up in his. So we just have to put trust in that and that will allow us to be hopeful in this situation that can often seem hopeless. And lastly, I want to talk about the idea that we can lose God's guidance or provision or hope. And I just want to write straight away say this is not the truth. You can't lose it. But it's very easy for me to say that and you not believe it. And actually, sometimes it's helpful to see it illustrated. So I want to take us to Exodus 23 verse 20. And just for some context, the Israelites had been moaning and groaning. Jacob discussed this a few weeks earlier with you guys. Um, so they had been moaning and groaning at God um, about the lack of food. So they were, they were basically throwing a tantrum like a toddler. And even after all this, this was God's response. See, I am sending an angel before you to protect you safely to the, pla the place I have prepared for you. I think that's amazing. I think that's absolutely amazing that after all their tantrums, God wants them protected and wants them to get to the place that he's prepared for them. And it's like a parent. When a child, their child is throwing a tantrum, a parent doesn't just turn their back and walk off. They're there with their arms outstretched, ready to accept that child once they're finished throwing a tantrum over that chocolate. And that's what God is. That's exactly how God's reacting here. He, even though the Israelites are absolutely fed up, he's still there wanting to make sure they get to that place he's planned for them safely. So this shows you no matter what you've done in your past or even what you're doing now or in the future, God forgives you. And God has this amazing plan that he's prepared for you, just like he had with the Israelites, and that he wants to make sure you get there safely. And I just hope that what we've discussed today really can provide you hope for the future and that you know that God's always with you, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what you've done. God will be there and he's got an incredible plan for you. And now I'm going to pass over to Graham and he's going to be singing Never Once, which is just again a reminder to us that God is always with us. Standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us, kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory was your power in us, scars and struggles on. Yes, our hearts can say
hope that today you have uh, felt God's presence in a really powerful and meaningful way with you. And remember that you can have hope for the future because God has got an amazing plan for you. And uh, just like Rebecca said, that we need to remember and our hope comes from knowing that God is with us always. That God might not always take us on the quickest route for our lives, but it will be the best route. And that even when you throw a tantrum, God is not going to let you down and let you go. God is always going to be with you. So take that as your hope for the future today. That when the world around you, or you might not feel like there is much hope for our future, know that God has a plan and that his plan for you is amazing and that you can have hope in that. I'm just going to pray for us now. Lord, I want to thank you that you have a plan for us and that you um, want to take us on this amazing journey with you. That just like for the Israelites, that you are with them every step of the way, that you will be with us and that we can't do anything to lose your love or, or lose your desire to want to journey with us. And so thank you, God, that we have you with us and that you are our strength and you are you never leave us and you never forsake us because you are amazing and powerful and you're our father. And so, Lord, I pray that we really feel your presence and your plan leading us uh, this week as we as we go through the different challenges and that we have your hope for our future. Amen. Amen. Remember that this week we want to see your riddle answers and we want to see your weird and wonderful things sent into us. So do get in touch uh, with those at jacob at cctw.org.uk. I hope that you have a really great week and that you feel that hope for your future. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.